I'm in the South and I saw Bumblebee. It is directed by Travis Knight. And if you haven't seen this movie, I will spoil it for you. This is sponsored by my link tree. You can learn more about that at the end of this review. The movie starts with something pretty adorable compared to the Michael Bay Transformers. I really like the introduction to this versus the entirety of the Transformers movies. It, because it establishes what is happening on Cybertron, like, why should I care about what's happening on Cybertron? It doesn't leave me with a bunch of questions as to, like, what happened to Cybertron? Did it explode? It helped me develop a framework for the world that this takes place in, and I really appreciate that. So, immediately I'm noticing that this is more cartoon style animated and I personally like it a lot more than the Transformers the the Michael Bay one like I would describe the Michael Bay Transformers as like visual noise and this not a lot of visual noise actually each Transformer like you have the Decepticons and you also got the Autobots and each Transformer looks very distinct compared to Michael Bay which does not look distinct like these Transformers have colors the Michael Bay ones barely any color it's like it's like oh it's just add gray to everything it's like this isn't Batman like are you serious well this is not that and I immediately appreciate it much more. I also really like the sequence in which Optimus Prime is like, go to Earth. When he said the sequence, my first thought was like, oh, Optimus Prime, are you coming with? He's like, nope. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, all right. Optimus Prime, uh, good luck. Good luck. I, I wish you good luck. And I wish Bumblebee good luck. And Bumblebee goes to Earth and crashes into a nice little forest area. And it's like, okay. I like how he's immediately being hunted down by the cops and, I mean, by the military. And what is it with all of these movies where you have a, a guy from space just crashing down? Or just like a dude from space. He doesn't have to like be recently from space. He could be on Earth for freaking forever. And like the military's first course of action is to like, I don't know, let's just, let's just get rid of him. We need to test on him. We need to experiment. And it's like, that's not a very friendly welcome. That is not nice at all. I wouldn't want to be an Autobot, but luckily, Bumblebee runs away, tumbles away, he rolls out, holy god diggity dang. Man, in the Michael Bay movies, I don't remember like an instance where he says, or Optimus Prime or anyone is like, Autobots roll out. It's more like, Autobots commence the sequence, Autobots do drugs, Autobots make a, to a toasty roasted dinner. Toki, what is a toki? Uh, I meant to say turkey. Make a turkey dinner, please. It's Thanksgiving and we need to show our appreciation for the earth, okay? That's what we gotta do. Autobots, cook a meal. No Autobots roll out, but like, in the in escape, a bumblebee rolls down a hill and he rolls out quite literally and I really appreciate that so much. Also, I really appreciate Charlie's position too, like Charlie's sad that her dad is dead and she's resentful of her mother moving on. First of all, I'm quite curious as to like when he died, like I must have missed a detail where it said like when he died. Uh, it couldn't have been like more than a few years though, so she's she's got that emo vibe and I'm like yeah I, I totally get it she's like listening to like cool rock music she's listening to I mean I guess it's the 80s 87 who is she listening to uh no one that I care about <sighs> the mother is like yeah here you go here's a pink helmet it's like this is not her style man Ryan traditional mother fashion oh man where they don't 
pay attention to you at all and just get what you wanted five years ago. But like five years ago in kid time is a lot different than five years ago in adult time. Like the world moves a lot faster when you're younger. And a lot more happens when you're younger too. So it's like, I feel like if I was in that situation and I was seeing my, my daughter wearing a lot of like rocker punk rock clothes like before the 90s oh what a hipster <laughs> wearing like grunge clothes and this is sacramento i don't know where she's getting grunge from not gonna lie like uh that's what i describe her as look is the grunge look but from what i remember correctly being told about is the grunge came originally from seattle and the only reason I, why I know that is because uh, living in Seattle for 19 years is like, oh, let's just push all the Seattle history. Did you know that Microsoft was created here in Boeing? Ooh, and Amazon? Ooh, and it's like, I don't care. Ah, there's too many tech companies up there. It's way too expensive to live. Move out, move out, get the heck out of there. And people are very annoying there. Oh, I have to wear chin diapers. I bet you still have to wear chin diapers there, just like everyone has to wear chin diapers in LA still. It's been freaking a year. Ugh. Luckily in Kentucky, they just kind of didn't enforce it. Or maybe it was here way too late. Oh, well, luckily we don't have to deal with chin diapers in 87 in this movie. I really appreciate the nice little character moments of Charlie and Charlie is being a little ego uh, emo emo and it's very hilarious how she's like eh, get away mom I don't I don't like you and your relationship with the step my stepfather mm. I'm like huh sad sad dude you could I don't know they could just die tomorrow you gotta have at least like some kindness towards them you don't want the last words that they hear to be like i don't like you mom you deserve to die and it's like oh my goodness man why why you gotta be so rude don't you know i'm human too this was a fun movie though not gonna lie i really appreciate how she goes to her uncle's car lot, finds a car with bees in it. Hilarious. But like, when she's now given the car, there's no bees in sight. And it's like, who cleaned up this car? Did she clean up this car? It shows her working on the car, but it doesn't necessarily show her getting rid of the bees. I just like how this is just Bumblebee and Bumblebee is just chilling. And then he, he's a Volkswagen. He's a Volkswagen Beetle at this point. I'm like, oh, this isn't a Camaro, but he, he can just switch his form into anything. And it's, it's interesting how he's just like, yeah, I'll just be a Camaro, it's all right. And it makes me wonder like what other powers that he has. I mean, his voice got, box gets ripped. So it answers my question as to, oh, why can't he speak? Oh, it's because his voice box literally got ripped. The robot equivalent. It's it's fun. It is very fun to watch their relationship develop. There's like small moments that I feel like this movie did a lot better than the Michael Bay movie. Like I definitely think the first Transformers missed out on building a character, uh, a character personality. Of, of, of what is that called a relationship? I, I felt like yeah, the first Transformers ruined that potential because instead of like focusing on Sam and Bumblebee getting t to know each other more, they just kind of like jump into the action and then bam, excuses for explosions is what I feel like these Michael Bay movies are. So uh, that was disappointing on that end, but this movie is not disappointing because it shows the little moments it shows the human i'm trying to hide this transformer car you know i'm trying to hide it from my parents and trying to hide it from this guy who walks in and learns about it pretty much won't tell anyone because he has a big old crush on her which is cute very cute scene 
And so they go uh, have a little hang. They hang out. I like her replacing the radio in the old radio that uh, Volks. <laughs> I almost called Bumblebee Volkswagen. That the I guess the Volkswagen had like when you scan a car, you can just change out the parts. I guess maybe or maybe you have to scan that specific model and whatever that model of car that specific car maybe has a broken radio well now you can't speak which is sad but he's you uh, bumblebee's figuring out how to speak using this this radio and it's like oh wow very clever dude i really appreciate his cleverness no matter that there is an imminent threat coming oh no there's a guy there's a bunch of dudes you got a dude called dropship and a dude called shatter and they're decepticons and they're deceiving the united states military oh yeah oh aliens wow let's just listen to them they they're aliens yeah, humans, what, what was us? Uh, we're just gonna listen to aliens now, and it's like, why trust them? I know you weren't given their species name, but dude, their names are literally Decepticons. Oh my freaking God, man. They're literally here to deceive you. It's a little bit too late when you realize that they're messing up with your uh, signals to bring an army of Decepticons to wipe out these Autobots. And so it's way too late. Luckily, there's a scientist dude who tells John Cena, by the way, it took me a second to realize that it was actually John Cena. I was like, is that that guy it looks so strangely like Don John Cena? Oh wait, it is John Cena, wow. I felt like he could have had a bigger impact in this movie. Like, his character is just kind of, you know, he's a military dude, yeah. Military propaganda. Yeah, heck yeah. Let's, uh, this is bad propaganda in my mind. I wouldn't join the military based on this movie. The movie is basically positioning so the 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 military is actually shooting fire on the good guys constantly and it's trying to stop these these dudes when i say dudes i mean bumblebee i mean charlie and charlie's friend who i'm gonna call Vosswater. i think his name is ross or something but i don't remember for sure in particular they don't really say his name as much as i would like him to as I would like the movie to rather. So I'm gonna call him Vosswater because it's it's close enough. So Vosswater is over here like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a nerd. I'm like, it's fine. It's perfectly fine for you being a nerd, dude. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm, many women don't want to date uh, lifeless corpses. You gotta have something going for you. Not gonna lie, you, got, you gotta. You can't just be sitting around for two years waiting for a disability check and while you do that you're wasting your money and time on the internet so and not doing any of the uh, not doing anything on the internet mind you just watching tv and not putting out content at the very least you gotta be doing something with your life and it has to be doing something with your life that the girl also wants to be part of too that's just some de general advice from a woman like myself. Um, I will definitely say this is definitely a tangent from the uh, movie review, but it does relate to Vosswater being like, oh, I, 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 I don't think she'd like me because I'm a nerd. It's like, actually, I, I personally, I would like you more if you were a nerd and you told a bunch of information. Try to impress me with your knowledge or actually don't try to impress, actually. That is the that is the number one thing. That's the number one piece of advice I would get, get give is don't try to impress women, okay? Uh, women should not be your goal in life because 
Women get saggy and old and their eggs dry up. The only purpose of women is to reproduce and if you have a woman who isn't reproducing like myself, then there is no value in them. Uh, luckily, I've been heavily neglected in my life, so I have personality and like individuality. So, uh, some women though, don't. I don't know, social cred, I guess. I've never been one for trying to appeal to people socially. It's definitely also the autism part, but like, don't try to impress women. You, you should, uh, it is a curse to be attracted sexually to a vagina. It, it's, it, their brains, including mine, are rotten. It's, it's the autism part of my brain that gives me some good, thinking powers, but the women part of my brain doesn't help. So stop chasing women, chase your goals and dreams, and women will come. All right, just focus on yourself. Stop focusing on women. Man, I just want to say this advice directly to Chris Chan. Man, uh, I've, I've gone so off of a tangent though, wow. I just, I just, just hearing that one particular line, just hearing that one line was just like, mm. no man, no man, you're thinking about it all wrong. If you focus on trying to get a woman, you're never going to get a woman, okay? Good example, Chris Chan. I want a girlfriend free girl between the ages of 18 to whatever age uh, Chris Chan is. Holding up a sign, that's not how you get women. You desperately want a woman, um, pay attention to something else. So that's my, my, that's my advice. This movie has the military trying to fight these, uh, these Autobots until, oh well, I just realized that they're not on our side, they're on their side, and we're gonna try to stop them, but bullets don't help. And it's like, why do they keep shooting bullets at these dudes? Like, why? Why is that your main go-to? I really don't appreciate that, like, at all. Cause it's like, seriously? This metal on metal crime. Metal on metal. What do you think is gonna happen? It's not like flesh is being penetrated by metal and so there's bleeding and internal organ damage. No, it's like, uh, it's, it's really the part that's, uh, it really, this may, this, their logic boggles me. I really don't understand what their logic could be to shoot them with bullets. Stop shooting the metal things with metal bullets. It's not going to have an impact on them, man. Ugh. That is definitely the thing that frustrated me most with this movie. The character moments were awesome between Charlie, Vosswater, and Bumblebee, and it was really devastating, like, seeing Charlie going over Bumblebee, like, going over the her dad's, like, favorite music with Bumblebee, and it's a nice heartwarming moment because it makes me actually care about her loss, okay? Versus in Transformers 5 where it's like, oh, we're just going to show a desolate place and then we're going to show these Transformers for five seconds on screen along with these children for five seconds. So then we're going to show this Transformer getting shot and then this chick getting very sad and seeing, looking at her cry. Um, doesn't that make you feel sad? And it's like, no. It feels forced, but this does not feel forced. I feel like I've been on the journey the entire time with Bumblebee and Charlie through their friendship. And so we get to see their friendship develop. And when Charlie stops the, 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 the transmitting beacon to, um, er, from Earth to the really desolate remains of Cybertron, it's just like, okay. Cool job, good job, Charlie. I felt like, yay, now Bumblebee doesn't have to leave. Oh wait, he does. He has to leave, he has a greater purpose. And Charlie decides to stay, which I wouldn't stay because again, I don't like my family. So whatever, either don't pay attention to care about me at all or wanna force an ideology on me. That's the reasons why I don't like my family at all. So Charlie does have a loving family though, which is very lucky for her. She has a mom who cares about her. 
It seems like her stepfather cares about her. The stepfather is nice to her. He's like, how's your day, Charlie? She's like, don't talk to me. You're not my real dad. It's like, I don't know, respect him. Respect him. That's the partner that your mom decided to choose. You should probably respect your mom's decision. I don't know. He's being nice. He's not being rude at all. He's not trying to like, I don't know, adopt you so they can use you as some sort of like social fun thing like oh i got an adopted doesn't that just make me look cool oh yeah look at that oh let's force her to do the career that i did that is definitely outdated i guess software engineering isn't technically outdated but like that i'm these are actually really true stories so i just appreciate that charlie has a loving family and she decides to go back t to them instead of going with Bumblebee and her family was really worried about the, uh, her and she has a newfound appreciation she's like I should cherish my family while I have them still but but there is a but it's really sad that there that we saw their friendship develop bumblebee and good old charlie and now they're gone it's kind of sad but appreciate the family that you do have that actually do love you so the ones who do love you who actually do care for you make sure that you hang out with them because they could just die of a heart attack and just like the father that's just like charlie's father did and she couldn't do anything a heart attack is internal you can have as much money as you want if you just die from a heart attack well there's that your heart just gave out there's nothing you can do about a heart giving out so i, I completely understand charlie's angle and i felt like this movie reminded me of a very important lesson cherish your loved ones and anyone else who does not care about you wants to use you for whatever reason don't care about them either they don't need your help so i mean forgive them just like if i if i can forgive my parents then you can too and they've well, i guess both sets of them neglected took advantage of me and used me for social cred, so. And I forgive them. Forgive your family too, love your family while you still have it. And that was a very nice lesson. This was a very sweet and endearing movie. Uh, there's a lot of cute moments in this movie. And this, this, this review went off in so many different ways. Uh, I've, I'm trying out a new style where I just kind of go off of like a train of thought and then like more of a train of thought and then what I thought based off that train of thought because my thoughts, I feel like I definitely don't share them enough. Uh, my thoughts usually pertain to like, uh, like my family. Like I do have family that I care about. Like I have a big, large biological family. Uh, my sisters who were, unfortunately victim to my mother's neglect and some of them never even got adopted so I, I gotta take care of them that's really what i'm doing all of this for and the end the end game is to help my sisters who were never got help i'm i'm the only one that has broken the cycle of giving birth at 20 and having any money at all like and like, I don't have enough to give them, but I really do want to give and I want to earn enough to be able to help them out consistently. So that's really what I'm doing this all for. And this movie really helped me, like, remind me of that goal. And it's like, yeah, yeah, this is very nice and endearing movie. I really appreciate that. It made me think a lot. So I, I got seven siblings biological siblings and they're all poor man it just makes me sad it just makes me sad to think of it and it makes me sad that i can't really help them out more but that's life 
That's life. Yeah, I think that's a fake Frank Sinatra song. So anyway, not for rambling aside, I also want to introduce another thing in my reviews is talking more about my score because I definitely don't talk. I kind of just mention the score and don't really give a reason why that I mentioned the score other than like, I like this, I like this, I like this. Um, I never assume that I know everything about a movie. Like there's so many jobs w when it comes to like being on a movie set and like one job messing up can affect the quality of the movie. So like, like there's, there's, there's like at least like seven or whatever, send seven, ten jobs plus, I don't know the exact jobs, like in order to establish what you are filming. And then there's like an audio department, music, scoring, uh, editing, writing, CGI. Oh man, there's, there's a lot of jobs. So it's like when I rate a movie, I'm rating my personal experience and like my personal enjoyment of that movie, the execution of all of those parts. And when I give something like a, a six or a five, that usually means like a six is middling. It's like, it's a middling movie for me. Five is, is less than middling, but it's, it's, it leaves me wanting a lot, but there's some substance there. Uh, Usually my grading score is like five and below is bad, five and above is fine. I'm, I'm, I grew up in the American school system where five is literally like a D, but like, I, I ain't part, no, that, that is flawed. That is, that system is terrible and flawed. I hate that system so much. So five and up, I'm gonna use the, the rounding up numbers method like when you use a decimal, uh, when you use like a, a decimal point or something, round up to the nearest whatever, and you got like a 0.5, a 1.5. Oh, you round it up to two, versus a 1.4, you don't round it up. You know that kind of philosophy. So that's what I'm doing with my reviews. I never assume that I know anything about the movie, well, except for my experience of watching it. And I can point things out that I really liked. And I feel like good editing is one that I don't mention. So if I don't mention the editing at all, it just means that the editing was not noticeable, which is a good thing. You should not notice editing. That's what the best, that's what the best uh, editors have said. The best editors in the industry are not supposed to notice editing. So there's, there's that. Also, I should mention that like when I'm mostly looking for like if a story engages me, if a story gives me a nice lesson, if if there is a lot of character moments that I can really appreciate and like relate on on a human level versus like that usually gets like a good score in my regard versus like a movie that's just kind of visual fluff and ha leaves me wanting and is not really a fun experience for me based on a variety of reasons. That is usually uh, why I give things a lower score. So uh, for this movie, I really liked the really cute interactions with my uh for this movie i really liked the cute interactions between bumblebee and charlie there's a lot of cute interactions like character moments like for example bumblebee does a little bit of this he sits like this and i'm in a spinning chair so i'm just gonna let it spin so bumblebee sits in a chair like this which is really cute and he does it multiple times and I appreciate that. I appreciate the heckity heck out of that. Cause it's like, well, he's, he's so small for a big thing. And I like to sit in the chairs like that too, <laughs> whenever I can. And I like to draw while doing that too. It's very fun. I also appreciate Charlie's character growth. 
because her the ultimate lesson is to make sure that you love your loved ones. I've felt like I've mentioned this a lot during this review. It's very applicable to this movie. And also, the fact that there is a, a solid opening, a solid middle, and a solid end is great in my book. Like, when I say solid, I felt like the pacing was well done, and there is a lot of fun moments where I was like, oh, nice little, like, chill out and have a nice little life, like, life sim, I guess. Life sim with a bumblebee. Let's have a nice little date, all right? Let's have a little, little nice little hangout, okay? And, like, Bumblebee is here to facilitate, and we learn more about Bumblebee, learn, like, oh, he's, now he's learning how to speak using the radio. This chick literally gave him his voice. And... It makes it even more tragic when he leaves. Honestly, when he leaves, I felt like there was like surface level, like connection when it came to me connecting to their relationship on screen versus like, I don't know. I felt like if, if it didn't really feel very devastating when uh, Bumblebee left and met up with Optimus Prime. Like it just kind of felt like, yeah, that that's kind of sad for her but she gets to be with her family she learned something new so that's nice versus like if i really cared about her like then it would be more devastating that she would be leaving bumblebee i mean if i cared about them more in this movie this movie was also had an added benefit of being an hour and a half like hour and 45 minutes long versus like the Transformers movies probably have the same, less plot in it than this movie. Even though this had like a pretty simple plot, relatively. There's not a ton of lore stuffed into this movie, but there was just a lot of character moments versus the Transformers, Michael Bay movies. More lore not and tiny more plot moments but like kind of just plot moments for the sake of plot moments in my opinion so this definitely was better executed than that so i gotta give this movie based on my personal enjoyment of it uh, it was pretty good uh i definitely had more want i wanted more of this movie I didn't quite